Hello, fellow readers. I'm Bristly Bear, and today I wanted to talk about science fiction books. Now, I grew up reading a lot of genres, fantasy, mystery, horror, and of course, science fiction. And when I watch reviews online of best science fiction um, or top 10 lists, there are a few that I grew up with and continue to even read till this day that are so enjoyable. I want to make sure you're hearing about them. These are series that I think either are no longer being printed. Um, however, they're still very much available either online or in older bookshops. Um, or I believe that they're just not being promoted by online booksellers like Amazon.com. So I wanted to talk to you today about what I think are three forgotten science fiction series that I think everyone who enjoys reading science fiction should try. The first series is called the Gaia series, written by John Farley and begun in 1979 with the first book called Titan. Now, this series involves the crew of a spaceship that have been sent on an expedition to Saturn where they find an unknown satellite orbiting the planet. When they investigate, they find that it's actually a kind of space station, something called a Stanford Taurus, which is very much like a Dyson sphere. Um, it looks like a large bicycle wheel with spokes that go to a central hub. However, within the circumference, inner circumference of this wheel is an entire ecology with atmosphere, creatures living on it. They attempt to investigate further. However, the satellite uh, sends a beam that renders them all unconscious. And when they wake up, they find that they have been transported on to the world inside this wheel on this Stanford Taurus, and they've all been separated. The book mainly focuses on the captain of the ship, whose name is Shirako Jones. I always loved that name, Shirako. Um, and Captain Jones has determined that she wants to explore and try to find her crew members. And in doing so, in exploring this land, she encounters numerous um, unusual flora and fauna. Uh, some examples are there's an entire race of beings that simply float through the atmosphere that are as enormous as dirigibles. And they are just this intelligent balloon-like creature that just slowly floats around. Um, she encounters a group of centaur-like people that she uh, befriends and finds that they are in a constant war with this other race of half bird, half uh, human creatures, and they have no idea why they are at war with these creatures, but there seems to be something biologically embedded in them that makes each of these races want to destroy each other. So um, Captain Jones uh, attempts to find her other, her missing crew members, and then eventually they decide to make the trek to the central hub of the Stanford Taurus, where the creatures who live on this world believe their god, named Gaia, lives. And they know that the only way to get there is going to be to literally crawl along one of the humongous spokes that go to the center and they know that that alone is going to take them months. And the entire time they're going to be crawling along this spoke, they're going to be horribly exposed to any dangers that they encounter. 
So a lot of the book, the first book, Titan, involves this trek along the spoke where they finally will reach the hub and be able to confront the god of these people to ask them, number one, why were they kidnapped from their own ship? And number two, why do these creatures feel it necessary to fight and try to kill each other? And what can be done to help them? So... Um, that's just the first book, Titan, and this is a trilogy with the second book being called Wizard and the third book being called Demon. Um, and the entire series revolves around parts of this crew and other people that end up on the Stanford Taurus and their interactions and ultimately their um, fight with the Gaia, the god of this um, of this world, which has turns out to have nefarious plans um, involving humanity. So uh, it is a fun read. Uh, I found it to be more of a lighthearted read than it was a hard, serious sci-fi read. A little bit more leaning into, of course, the fantasy genre than the strict sci-fi genre. So if you are looking for something that falls right in the center of that fantasy versus science fiction niche, then I think you would really get a kick out of reading John Varley's Gaia trilogy. And that would be with the first book called Titan. The next series starts with a book called The Tar Aim Krang, written by Alan Dean Foster in 1972. Now, Foster wrote an enormous body of work that takes place in what he calls the Humanx Commonwealth Universe. Now it's called that because it largely involves two races, um, the humans and an insectoid race called the Thranks, which essentially look like human-sized praying mantises and are extremely intelligent and extremely civilized. There are a lot of different races used in his Humanx Commonwealth universe, but these two have formed somewhat of a symbiotic relationship, so they're featured very heavily within it. The book Tar and Krang features two characters that show up in a lot of these books, and that is Flinks and Pip. And Flinks is a 16-year-old thief um, who has an extremely quick wit, is an orphan, and also has a somewhat unpredictable ability to read minds. His pet, Pip, is a snake with wings that is able to fly. It has some empathic abilities and also uh, the ability to spit a poison that is deadly and will kill a person in less than a minute. So these are two roguish characters that are a lot of fun and they're always getting into interesting adventures together and um, have to untangle themselves from a lot of sticky situations. The first book starts with Flinks and Pip finding a dead body and upon it they find a star map. And the star map, as it turns out, leads to a long-lost planet of an alien race that died out half a million years before called the Tar Aim. And somewhere on this planet is supposed to be an artifact that this warlike race built, which is either um, a genocidal weapon or might even just be a musical instrument. Nobody knows. However, there are a lot of people that are interested in finding it, not just for its obvious possible warlike weapon traits, but also because it's going to be extremely valuable. So Flinks and Pip um, get involved with a group of characters that are searching for this Krang, and they head off into the universe to find the missing planet. And of course, 
there are other people trying to find this Krang as well, and they're sure to encounter opposition. So, um, a very enjoyable book to read, and each of the books that feature Flinks and Pip are very episodic, I found. You don't need to read one necessarily to read the others. However, over time, Flinks does develop his, uh, and his mind reading abilities and other abilities that he discovers he has and uh, eventually learns that he is somewhat instrumental in the survival of all of the races that live within this Humanx Commonwealth universe. So these are books that are a lot of fun to read. I would almost compare them to pirate novels. This Humanx Commonwealth universe is almost like a huge sea and everyone on it basically pirates and rogues. Um, so it is a lot of fun, very episodic adventures to read and highly enjoy them. I recommend you give them a try and introduce yourself to this enormous body of work that takes place in this Humanx Commonwealth universe. The first book being Tar and Crane by Alan Dean Foster. The last series I want to present to you is called The Rings of the Masters series, written by Jack Chalker and begun in 1986. Um, first, I want to talk about the author, Jack Chalker. He has always fascinated me with his ability to do world creation. Um, it just seems to come effortlessly to him. He can create worlds with entire societies, ecologies, religions, and governments uh, that are so well thought out and so well presented. Um, in fact, I have read books of his that have the characters going to four or five different varying worlds and the people that live on them are completely different and so well thought out um, that it has just amazed me at how easily he seems to do this. So the books I want to present to you, the Rings of the Masters series, start with a book called Lords of the Middle Dark, and there are a series of four books. And in this book, it starts with a very common a a very common trope in science fiction, which is that on Earth long ago we built an AI computer and we gave it the directive to ensure that humanity never goes extinct. And of course, this computer determines that humans are the most likely cause of our own extinction. And so it decides to separate us and spread us throughout the universe. So over thousands of years, it takes people off the earth and spreads them to other planets all throughout the universe. Now, the original programmers of this AI um, just to be safe, had created a set of microchips, five microchips, that when inserted into the mainframe of this AI computer will shut it down and make it reprogrammable. And they inset these microchips into rings. So there are five rings that are somewhere throughout the universe that if gathered and used in the mainframe will shut this computer down and make it reprogrammable. Now, on Earth over the thousands of years, it has regressed humanity to pre-technological levels. So in North America, for instance, it's just like Indians on the plains. Um, in uh, Japan, it's once again a feudal system. Uh, so all across the world, um, we have been regressed to have no technology. And one day, an American Indian man finds a spaceship that has crashed. And uh, upon investigating, finds on this spaceship the information about these rings that can be used to stop 
this AI computer and reprogram it. Now, in Japan, at essentially the same time, a young girl who has genius intellect has managed to override one of the AI's computers to escape a life of being a perpetual concubine. Um, so now these two have become the most dangerous people in the universe to this computer. One who knows how to override its programming and another which knows how to ultimately shut it down and reprogram it. So it begins its hunt for them. They gather friends to help them and eventually end up on a spaceship traveling the universe to find the planets that contain these rings and gather them so that they can shut the computer down. Now, what is interesting about this quest is that when uh, it took humanity out into the universe, instead of terraforming worlds, so that humanity could live on them, it decided that it was better to just genetically alter the humans so that they could live in those environments. So when our heroes find a planet that has a ring, they are going to need to genetically modify themselves so that they will be able to go on that planet and infiltrate its culture to take these rings. However, this process can only ever be done once. And this was one of the most interesting things about these books, was the tension among the heroes on who was going to alter their body permanently to something that may never be able to leave that planet again, just in order to help save the universe from this computer. So there's a lot of interesting tension there. Uh, and, and all the while they're being sought after by this computer and its robotic agents that are sent to try to stop them. So. Now, this is a series of four books and they are extremely easy and enjoyable to read filled with a lot of interesting tensions and very much what I would classify as a space opera. Um, it's essentially a set of heist novels that have to take place on alien planets. So who doesn't find that to be a lot of fun? So I suggest giving these books a try. I think that you will appreciate it. And I think that you're going to fall in love with Jack Chalker's writing and world building. So, and with that, I want to thank you for watching this video. I hope that I've given you some good ideas and some new books to give a try. Um, if you have any other books like these that you want to suggest, please put them down in the comments and let me and other people that might uh, encounter this video know. And of course, as always, if you could like and describe like and <laughs> subscribe to my content. It would be greatly appreciated because I'm fairly new at this and I can certainly use the subscribers. So I hope to talk to you soon in another video and uh, I hope you have a great day. Thanks so much.